Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. If you're watching live as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'll say hi to a few of you folks in just a moment. And if you're watching on replay, drop hashtag replay in the comments. I can say hello to you. And if you're new to the Paper Pixie, drop hashtag new so we can say hi to you as well. Welcome. Hello, Norleen. Kristen, Renee, Penny, hi Nancy, hi Sherry, Mary, Pam, Anne. I love paper pixie time too. I always look forward to Wednesday evenings. Hi Yvette, hi Mickey. I had my comments up here, but my technology's not cooperating today. Peggy, Susan, Ray Lee, welcome. I'm gonna jump into tonight, you ready? My husband, Brian, is watching for your questions and comments. If you do have a question for us tonight, be sure to put Q colon in front of your question. That will help us cue your questions. We will hold questions till the end of the live stream. That way I can focus on tonight's projects. And then I will be here until I've got all your questions answered to the best of my ability. I don't know everything. So thank you for joining me tonight. If you uh, shop with me, you earn pip pixie, pippy perks, pixie perks. Orders of $25 or more earn pixie perks stars with me. It's a way to give back to my loyal customers. You can earn free stamp sets or free stamp and die bundles. When you place your order, if it's under $150, be sure to add the host code. Um, and then the easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. My host code changes about every two weeks. So if you use that link, I always recommend that my customers bookmark that link. While it looks like it's going to my website, that magic link will actually take you directly to the Stampin' Up! website. Ensure that you're shopping with me and ensure that you've got the current host code applied to your order. It will automatically do that behind the scenes. If your order's $150 or more, don't use the host code because you'll earn stamp and rewards. And we're in the midst of celebrations, so spending uh, $50 or $100 earns free products during celebration. Celebration goes through August 31st. There's also a great join promotion if you're interested in getting a discount. Um, there is the Making Plans kit, and um, that's through August 31st as well. So let's see. Oh, show and tell. I do have some show and tell, and I'll share some stories as well. The kids. Oh, it's at the bottom here. We'll start with Lily. She's our rising fourth grader. She is um, loves to draw. So this is Bugs and Pets. I like the kitty cat with a cat toy, the dog with a dog bone. I don't know why she did a snake, but <laughs> butterflies and moths and a bumblebee. So that's fun. She did worked on that over the last couple of days. And Nolan drew an ice cream truck. He's our rising first grader. And he wrote on the back his summer bucket list. And I'm going to do my best to try to tell you what this says. So I want to go to the beach and the swimming pool and wash and play, mm, I don't remember what this one was. We were trying to translate it. And wash. Roblox. Oh, and play Roblox. Um, the last thing is, is to go to get ice cream. I wanna go to the movies and walk my dog, but he wrote God, which is so cute. And go camping, camping and play volleyball or volleyball. So that was super cute. Let's see, we've done some of these things. We've gone to the pool. We knocked out a lot of these while we were in Ohio. Went to the pool. We didn't go to the beach. What else did we do? We got ice cream for sure. We did that on Sunday. We went to get ice cream because Mr. Nolan has COVID. So COVID has hit the DiMatteo household right now. It's just Nolan. He's fine. Um, the only reason I tested him is he was sneezing profusely. So we tested him on Sunday and I was, I said to you, 15 minute timer on the test. There's no way it's going to be positive. That thing turned positive right at the 15 minute mark. We confirmed it on Monday with a PCR test, but man, we made it this long. So, um, but the rest of us are still testing negative. I don't know how, but <laughs> it has sort of thrown us for a loop. So, um, 
thank you for your grace with my schedule. The kids are home from summer camp this week and next because of Nolan's COVID, um, positive COVID test. So as you can tell, my blog isn't getting any love from me. We've got the kids home at Camp DiMatteo now and so the normal camp. So um, yeah, it's just craziness. They go back to school on August 8th. I guess I'm glad that they've, or we're both glad that they've gotten it out of their system, or Nolan has gotten out of his system at least before school starts. So tonight, I don't know how I came up with these projects, but they came out of me today. And I'm going to attempt to show you how I use the Scan and Cut, because it is one of my favorite tools. And um, I wanted to show you two different ways to use this beautiful, wonderful world bundle. This bundle is available during celebration. You get a full pack of designer series paper. It's 12 sheets of double-sided paper, gorgeous paper. This is cut directly from the paper. I'm gonna show you how I do that on the scan and cut. And then this one is actually stamped. It is a distinctive stamp. Let's focus here, camera, thank you. Anyways, this is a remix of a treat holder that I resized inside. It perfectly fits two Hershey's Nuggets. It is actually a self-closing, self-holding. I don't, you don't have to tie it with ribbon. You don't need an adhesive, we don't need to cut anything. It's super quick and easy. Love that. Now, because we're a little bit of a hot mess here in the DiMatteo household, I haven't written everything down, so I'll probably be referring to my catalog a bit. But I thought we would start with the card. Really quick and easy layout. I'm gonna show you how to cut that designer series paper. And um, I just love that diagonal cut for some reason. It's one of my favorite types of ways to put a pattern on the front of a card. But I put some vellum, vellum here to soften behind the flowers and then those flowers are literally cut from the designer series paper. So two ways, again, if you spend $100, you get the Wonderful World designer series paper, which let me show you that up close. It is a beautiful paper. Um, a bunch of us demonstrators have mentioned that we didn't love it at first, but now that we have the paper, I can't get enough of it. So every time I reach $100, I keep adding this to my order because it's just beautiful paper. I think this one is my favorite, and this one's my second favorite. So, love, 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 love it. Beautiful colors, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, Mossy Meadow, Orchid Oasis, Pear Pizzazz, Rich Razzleberry, Sahara Sand, and Starry Sky. Always a mouthful, but I love these colors together. So let's, oh, I have the Scan and Cut is on an extension cord, so this is gonna be a really interesting thing. Bear with me tonight, but I wanna show you how I use it. I am by no means an expert. I will always direct you to the Papered Chef. She's a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator and she's got some fantastic video tutorials for the Scan and Cut. I love this tool in my wheelhouse. It is an investment. I find that I use it most often for either cutting out images on designer series paper or sort of mass producing um, cards, especially when the stamp set does not have a coordinating die. I find that if it does have a coordinating die, then it's easier to cut a bunch of blanks using the die and then using the stamp apparatus. So it will in no way replace my stamp and cut and emboss machine, nor my dies. I love those and I will continue to collect them. But the stamp and the uh, scan and cut, wow, lots of S's and C's and things. The scan and cut is a great tool to have if you don't have one already. Um, this is not a promotion for it, but I wanted to show you because I've had lots of you ask questions about it. And I'm gonna show you also about this flower. I've got some cool tips and tricks. My camera is deciding not to focus tonight um, to get a really beautiful, distinctive image from that. So I found my sponge daubers. That is the lucky tool. So I'm gonna start by bringing in the full sheet of designer series paper. This is gonna be interesting because I don't have a lot of space on here, but this is the piece that I've pulled. Now, if you love to fussy cut, you don't need the scan and cut. I do not like to fussy cut even a little bit. Not even a little bit, I don't like it at all. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, but this is a beautiful pattern of paper to fussy cut these beautiful flowers out. You can use the scan and cut. We don't have dies for this, but I don't want this paper to go to waste. There's also a beautiful pattern on the back, but this one steals the show. And so I'm gonna start by bringing in, let me tell you first which machine I have. I'm gonna bring that into view. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm not really set up for this, but I have the Scan and Cut 
SDX125. I used to have the CM350. That's since been discontinued, I believe. I love this one more because it's got an auto sensing blade and it's whisper quiet when it cuts. You'll probably hear it a little bit. I don't have a ton of space front to back here, so I will likely do things on the screen and then move it out of the way to do its thing. And then I'll bring it back in view. So that gets that question out of the way. Another tip I have on the scanning cuts is you need to be very particular about which cutting mat. It, obviously it comes with one, but when you need to replace your cutting mat, not all cutting mats are alike. So for the SDX 125, let's see if I can get this in the screen here. This is the number you want, C-A-D-X-M-A-T-S-T-D-12. And you wanna look for the little triangle on the top here. Okay, now it's so funny, it hangs from this. I just hang it on a little um, 3M adhesive thing, but it's technically upside down. So hopefully all my pieces and parts, I'm looking for my one second. Let's see. One important tool that I'm looking for is the pink little chiseler which may or may not be somewhere where I can find it. All right, so we may improvise here. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. Now this cutting mat is a full 12 by 12, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that's lined up right in the corners. My guess is it's probably, <clears throat> I don't know what I did with it. That's all right, we're gonna do it this way. That's too bad. Um, I do have this linked on my favorites page on thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. If you look at tools, Mr. DiMatteo is looking for it. Yes, it's the papered chef for sure. So I want to make sure that this is pressed down really hard and I'm looking for my tool. I don't know where I put it. It's so funny. Let's see. Not in here. Let's see. Well, it's not that just glorious? I'm gonna use my bone folder for this. So I just wanna make sure that I smooth this out. It's like a hot pink little chisel thing. Used as a label remover. And if I happen to see it pop up, watch what'll happen after I'm done doing this. So anyways, I'm burnishing this so that it's gonna fit or it's gonna stick really well to the mat, okay? Sorry, dear. And I have a few of them, so for some reason they've taken a walk. So I just want to make sure that those edges are not curling up. Let me bring in the machine here. That's all right. You're going to get trapped. Yeah, I'm going to say that's all right. It's okay. All right, bringing in the machine here. Bear with me. gonna power it on here <laughs> oh. all right so this works great with stamped images as well as patterned images on designer series paper a couple of tips and tricks I'm gonna click OK here I'm gonna go ahead and we first need to feed the mat okay I'm gonna go ahead and feed the mat you're not gonna really see this it's off camera but I want to press this to feed the mat it's gonna, oops, that didn't work. Hold on. I'm a hot mess right now. I knew that this was going, this is probably not going to work. Hold on. Bringing the mat out. <laughs> mat is not loaded properly. All right, hold on a second. Talk amongst yourselves. My pencil is stuck in there. This is just going really well. <laughs> oh, gosh. There we go. For some reason, the pencil. If only it was magnetic. Hold on, guys. Don't do what I do. There we go. Okay, now we're back in business. <laughs> oh, where that guy went. All right, loading the mat again. Hold on. And I'll put it back in frame in just a minute. So what the machine does is it makes sure you've got the right mat loaded. Let me move this back in here, okay. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click scan, direct cut, and I'm, I do it right to the machine, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click, it's on color. I prefer to do recognition mode of color. Um, I think Kim at the Papered Chef always does black and white. You can just do trial and error here. I'm gonna pull this out of the screen while it scans. Let's see if this will get stuck. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click, I'm clicking start, okay? Hopefully this is good. It's not good. Oh, look at that. I knew this was gonna be a hot mess, you guys. <laughs> this is how we are at the Paper Pixie. All right, I'm gonna redo that again, hold on. This is what happens when you're live. It just didn't load properly. All right, hold on. No, it's okay. Thank you for that. The favorites banner was up. That's why nobody could see it. All right, we're going to go ahead and scan, direct cut to the machine. And I'm going to bring it back here for a second. I just don't have enough real estate space here. Oh. I tell you what, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try one more time. I took off the banner, thank you guys. I forgot to close it. Okay, home, scan, direct cut to the machine, start. I do like to kind of catch it in the back. All right. Now so that you can see the screen here, I know I've got a bit of a glare. Basically what it's asking is to frame the image. We're doing a full sheet here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. It's gonna take a minute to recognize. And if this doesn't cut properly, I've got a bunch of this, the uh, flowers cut just in case. <laughs> Bobby, your comment cracks me up. You're a PhD, push here, dummy. If I can't push 19 button and make it work, it's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm gonna show you some tips or tricks with what to do with basically what the scanned image says that it's going to cut. Um, it does take a minute because this is a full 12 by 12, but there are tips and tricks to make sure that you only cut the flowers that you want it to cut. And I think for tonight, I'm just going to choose one flower for this to cut so it doesn't take too long. Push one button. Got it. <laughs> oh. Yes, Papered Chef has classes on her YouTube channel as well, and I think she's got a course on Udemy as, as well. So the other thing I like to click here, do you see how there's all these different pieces and parts here? There's a lot going on there. It tries to cut everything. I'm going to ignore object size and I'm just going to press the plus sign and go up to like, I don't know, two and a half inches maybe. Doing this from an angle here. Um, actually, I'm just going to go up to three and click OK because I only want it to cut a few of these images. But by doing the ignore object size, you can get rid of all the parts that it's sort of reading incorrectly. You wanna take a really close look at this. You can zoom in to see how it's um, outlining things as well. I'll click OK. I'm gonna click OK again. Next. You're still looking for the chiseler, aren't you? So funny. Put it somewhere and then, all right. So the other thing I love to do here is click the circle here. I love to give it an outline distance of 0.4. That's just hitting the plus sign once. Zero, whoop, see I hit it twice. It knows it's live, so it's getting a little trigger shy here. Um, 0 0.04, that gives an outline just like our Stampin' Up! dies do. I'm gonna click okay. And then I'm also gonna click edit because I actually wanna get rid of a bunch of these flowers. Um, let's do, I'm gonna take that one out and delete. So you just, with the red box, select what you don't want and hit delete and then okay. I'm gonna not do this one and I'm gonna not do this one for now. We're just gonna do the three. 
So we've got one, and I, hopefully you can see that. We've got one, two, and three. We'll cut those three. Those are the ones that have the outline here. And again, if you zoom in, you can see those up close. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. We are human, aren't we? All right, I'm gonna click OK again. The next screen it's gonna ask me, well, what do you wanna do? Please select what you wanna do. So, oh, I see I've got a fourth one there. Let's go back one. I don't want this to take too long. That's so funny. Edit. This guy will delete him too. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could just do the one flower. You don't have to do the whole sheet. You can just scan it again and all of that stuff. All right, please select. This is important. We want to cut. I don't really do any of the other things. And then it's going to do its thing. I'm going to attempt. I don't think I'm going to try that. I'm going to go ahead and click start. It says it's going to take two minutes. You're going to hear some funny noises. It's going to test the thickness of the mat, and then it's going to test the thickness of the paper, which means I don't have to tell it what paper I'm using and what depth I need it to cut. It figures that out all by itself. That's one of my most favorite things about the SDX 125. There's lots of different models. I think this might be the SDX 125E maybe, even though it doesn't say that, I'm not sure. Um, but there's different colorways and other things. So we've got the first flower is just about cut. Probably need to move this in a second. It will not cut around non-selected flowers. You can be very specific about which flowers you want it to cut. And you'll see as it's feeding its way through the machine, it's just doing its thing doing this auto cut and wait until you see what this looks like when it's done. We are gonna use this one more time with a stamped image. I wanna show you it works the same way. What's on the last flower? Michelle, you, oh, I'm gonna answer that at the end. <laughs> I keep, I'm like jumping into questions for some reason. We'll save those for the end. All right, so it is all done. It brings the mat all the way back. And the last thing I'm gonna do is click OK. I just click Home. Now I could go back and redo all of this, but we're actually gonna take the mat out. So I'm gonna click Home, OK. It's gonna delete the work that we've done, and then I'm gonna unload, okay? Oops. That's gonna drop good cash. Mr. Miyagi hands here. All right, so here's the mat. Okay, and hopefully you can see, we've got this flower cut, this one, and this one. I'm just going to, because my mat has been used quite a few times, right now I can just pull this off, because it's not super tacky at the moment, but you can see we've got those three flowers are cut out. Love this. Now, I can stick this back to the mat, rescan it, cut some different flowers. You don't have to do all of them at once. You can always rescan it back in. The only tip I have is these ones that are already cut out, Sometimes it will try to pick that up as something to cut. Just make sure you delete those in your scan. All right, and then usually I can just kind of bend the mat. Otherwise you can use, there's a tool in the machine or that comes with the machine is this little pallet that you can just scoop right underneath. But look at that flower, ready to go. And I love these flowers the most. There's a little bit of paper in between that it cut out. Now you'll see it didn't cut out the inside here and that's because I did a 0.4 and the, I should say the channel into that area is about the 0.4 so it didn't cut into that. But that is okay with me. You can do zero and it'll cut it right up to the image. And then I just wanna make sure I clean off all these pieces. Now if only I had my little chiseler, I would show you to sort of prep my mat for the next time I would take the little chiseler and scrape off any pieces of paper. Sometimes there is paper that's left behind on here. You can see this is a well-loved mat. You can re-adhesive it or re-tack it, all kinds of great things. Lots of tutorials, Papered Chef, as well as others. So, bringing in our card here, we're gonna be starting with a base of rich razzleberry that measures four and a quarter by 11. 
I've got it scored in half at five and a half, and I'm gonna turn that valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. And of course, I don't put my tools back. So there we go. For the inside, I have got basic white that measures four by five and a quarter. Just gonna use liquid glue for that. I'm determined to find that little chiseler before this live is, I know we're gonna find it somewhere. I literally just used it today. That's for the inside. Now, for the diagonal pieces, let me go ahead and cut a piece to show you. I love this way of doing this diagonal piece. So I'm gonna cut a piece in portrait to three and three quarters by five. Actually, I'm gonna cut two pieces. So three and three quarters by five. Start with whatever size you want it to be, but you wanna cut, in this case, two pieces, because you're gonna need your diagonal pieces to go in different directions. So I've got two pieces again, three and three quarters by five. And I'm gonna start with this one with the floral side up, and I'm gonna turn the top left, sorry, the top right corner, I'm turning it this way, I'm turning it counterclockwise, and I'm gonna put it at the three quarters mark. You can decide how deep of an angle you want, which then means the lower left, I wanna line up on the third line as well. Three lines means three quarters of an inch. So each one of these lines is a quarter inch, so I've got that one, three quarters of an inch to the left of the cutting groove, and this one three quarters of an inch to the right. And you wanna remember that, because you're gonna cut your other piece the exact same way. So we have two pieces that look like that. This one I'm gonna flip, or you could do it the other direction, counterclockwise. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Lower left, three quarters to the right, Upper right, three quarters to the left. Totally backwards, right? She's gonna keep saying it until you say it, isn't she? <laughs> so then we got two pieces that go like that. Okay, so basically, you just swap. There's one card front, and there's another. Okay, super cute. I've already got those cut ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay those on the card front here and liquid glue to start. Now the key with lining up your diagonal pieces is you're gonna line up the top, the left and the right and you want about a quarter of an inch of your rich razzleberry to be around the two sides and then the top here. This piece is gonna glue down here and just line right up with that yellow piece. I think it's Daffodil Delight. Like so. Okay. And then if you have any raised edges, just come on in and burnish. Sometimes you get that with the paper trimmer. I just replaced the blade, so I've got a brand new fancy blade. And now I've got a piece of vellum, and this piece measures, doing the math in my head, three and a quarter by four and a half, okay? And that's gonna sort of layer the same sort of quarter of an inch in, but that softens the pattern of the designer series paper so that when I come in to lay that flower down, it pops a little bit more. So here's my trick for this. Couple of different things you can do. The um, vellum's gonna curl just a little bit while the glue is wet, but I still prefer liquid glue. So I'm gonna glue the flower to the vellum first, cause that's gonna give me a guide on where to put adhesive when I glue the vellum to the card. Okay, so we're gonna kinda go like so. Press that down. Now 
Now what we can do is on the back side of that, I can see where the paper is and we're gonna hide our adhesive so we don't see it on the front of the card. And you can be as messy as you want here, just don't do too much glue because it will ooze with the vellum. And then we'll go ahead, again, I love liquid glue for this because you can slide everything into place. But all that glue is gonna be hiding behind the flower. So the basics of that are starting. I love, I mean, this flower I think is my favorite. It also comes in Flirty Flamingo in that designer series paper. These are my three favorites from that pattern. But so these will go on card fronts for sure. No hesitation in using those, don't hoard them. And then we're gonna go ahead and stamp using Lisa Curcio's Charming Sentiments Bundle. I haven't even labeled the dies yet because it's been just, you know, a summer like that. But we're going to be using the sentiment Beyond Grateful. With rich Razzleberry ink, so that really pops on the front. I've just got a scrap piece of basic white here. And I love this bundle because the dies cut out really closely, almost like you're fussy cutting. I told you I don't like fussy cutting. This was totally up my alley, but the dies will cut out each of these sentiments really close to the, to the words. So beyond grateful, this might be my favorite sentiment in the whole set. Such a great one to have. There we go. Got the die set here already and a couple of reusable pieces of post-it tape here. So I'm just gonna line up, you'll see, and I'll bring this up to the camera. You wanna put these up really close to the sentiment. Pardon my head here. There we go. I do like to use two pieces of post-it tape so that it doesn't move on me. How are we doing? <clears throat> Bringing in my stamp and cut and emboss machine, which has had its screws tightened, so let's hope we don't have that awful noise. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking about that for a while. Uh, between that and things being fed into the stamping or the scanning cut that aren't supposed to be there, mem we're making memories, folks. <laughs> uh, too funny. Get this guy here. Oh my gosh, so many things you can use. Denise, I see your comment. Yeah, cut layered shaped matte. Oh, so many cool things. If you're willing to invest a little bit of time into watching videos, there's so many things the Scan and Cut can do. So look how beautiful that is. I love that. And we're just gonna pop that up on dimensionals. I put my die in my magnetic bowl. I'm learning. Instead of just willy-nilly putting it down somewhere. Then we've got our card front here and we'll pop that up down here in the bottom. And then I absolutely love these heart pearls and I'm going to grab a large one. I just put down my tools instead of putting them away and then I can't find them. But that heart is just so sweet and we'll put that right there. And there is one way with the beautiful, wonderful world bundle from Celebration. Love those flowers and that designer series paper and that little heart, pearl heart. That's in the annual catalog if you're looking for that. So is the Charming Sentiments bundle as well. I'll bring these back in just a second. So love the card. And then you can mix and match this, you know, with any different colors. For this one, I might do a flirty flamingo base. Um, grab any sentiment set, sentiment set you have, and you can really let the designer series paper do the talking. Change the sentiment for sympathy, for birthday, for thank you, all, you name it. Get well soon. And just love mixing and matching patterns of designer series paper. You know me and my paper, I love it. So let's go ahead and make the quick and easy treat holder. I can find the paper piece, and if not, we'll just cut a new one. This is for some reason. Is it under the machine? Might be. Or fell down, so we're just gonna cut another piece. 
All right, so for this pattern, I cut a piece, but of course I can't find it because I got frazzled. So we're doing three and three eighths by five and three eighths. And notice this is a directional pattern paper. So I have my direction going in portrait, okay? That's sort of important with the layout of this treat holder. I shared this treat holder almost, I think it was four years ago, it was in 2018. So bringing it back. And bringing in the Simply Scored, I'm gonna save you the hassle of doing diagonal folds and show you a different way to do this treat holder. But on the short side, so the three and three eighths side, again, it's three and three eighths by five and three eighths. We're gonna score at one inch from each side. So just rotate it 180, okay? And then on the long side, we're gonna score this at one and one eighth and two and one eighth from each side. One and one eighth, two and one eighth, okay? Next, we're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. I can put my glue away for right now because we're not, we don't need glue for the treat holder part, just for the embellishment. I do have a template for you. I know this looks super tiny, but it's so cute to have a treat holder. Great, quick and easy one to make a whole bunch of. All right, so. Here is the template, okay? So what I'm gonna do is sort of fold on one side. I've got this in portrait, I'm gonna fold on this side and I actually want, this is just like um, some of the more recent treat holders I've been using where we're gonna use the paper to create the diagonal fold. So we've got this score line here. I know it's kind of hard to see with this pattern paper, but this score line, I want to fold to connect with the folded edge, okay? Now, if you do it the wrong way, like I did on my original sample, you can fix it. But there is a certain way that you need these diagonals to go. So you can see we're going from the upper right corner to the lower left. I did that by folding in and then lining up this top score line with the folded edge, like so, okay? And then I just burnish. Do the same thing, but on the opposite side, again, taking that score line, lining it up with that edge, and we're basically just using our score lines here to do the work for us. Alternatively, what you can do is with your ruler, and I'll show you on the template here, and the take your pick tool, that's the wrong attachment. Let's grab my, or you could use your stylus from the Simply Scored, but I've got the uh, stylus attachment and you could just do this with a ruler and your stylus if you didn't want to just use your paper score lines to do the trick but if you're gonna make a whole bunch of these I always recommend make um, adding as much efficiency as you can okay so we've done those two now we're gonna end up popping those out the other way but I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite side again like so whoops like so Come in and burnish. And if you're new here, you'll see a lot of folks putting a Q in front of their question. We are doing Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, just put a Q colon in front of it. That will Q it at the end for us, okay? So now I'm just gonna fold those diagonal score lines the opposite way. And you can come in and burnish this way too if you like. It's just easier to do it the way I did before. Again, popping those out opposite. So then they're kind of going in this direction, like so, okay? So essentially what's gonna happen, we've got those popped in. These two pieces are just gonna overlap each other, like that. And believe it or not, it magically holds itself together. So, so cool. Okay, so I'm gonna grab two Hershey's Nuggets. And I like to just kind of sandwich those together like that. And they're just gonna fit right in here. 
Hopefully you can see how we're doing that. So I have it right now in landscape. I've got the back side of the paper, so not the side that I want to show on the outside. It's kind of looking like this if you pinch from the side. And then those two pieces are just going to overlap. Again, put your nuggets in there. If they're giving you a hard time, just stick a glue dot between them. <laughs> but once they're in there, let's go. I'm looking at, there we go. Look at that. I'm not touching them. It's holding itself together. The magic of paper physics. Is that physics? I don't know. Geometry, physics, some kind of math. Both. <laughs> so that's the template. No cutting, just scoring and folding. And then what we're going to do, let's do a little bit of stamping. I'm going to grab a scrap piece of white. And I actually want to show you a couple of different examples here. So Hopefully you can see which one's my favorite of the ones that are here. I've cut these two out with the scan and cut, but this one and this one and this one, these three were stamped after I colored the stamp set with our stamp and write markers. And with a distinctive stamp, you sort of lose that distinctive look when you use the markers. They're just a little bit too juicy and sort of when you color over the distinctive texture of the stamp, you kind of get this blurry, blotchy, messy. Now it's not ugly per se, but this one sure looks a lot prettier, doesn't it? So I'm gonna go ahead, let me just grab a whole new piece of basic white. Of course I have no, um, <laughs> uh, basic white scraps because I use them almost as quickly as I create basic white scraps. They're just too good. So I just like to cut it into quarter sheets. So five and a half by four and a quarter. Pop those in my scrap bin or I should say my scrap pocket. And then let me show you the magic here. All right, sponge daubers, and I think it was last week, I didn't have sponge, it was last week or the week before. Do you remember when we were talking about sponge daubers? I didn't have them, but it, remember I told you it reminded me of putting black olives on your fingertips when you were a kid? So that's what sponge daubers are. They literally fit on your fingertip and they give you a lot more control. This is the Wonderful World stamp set, by the way, that you get in the bundle. And I love the way it looks when you use sponge daubers versus markers. They're beautiful stamped in one color as well, but let's go ahead. I'm doing Melon Mambo and Mossy Meadow. I'm gonna start with the Melon Mambo and we are literally, I'm just gonna pick up ink on my sponge dauber and I'm gonna dab it on the rose part. And I'm gonna do that a few times until I've got ink coverage that looks good. And you can see that it's getting a little bit of ink on there. Now I would do the same thing if I was doing direct to stamp with markers, we're gonna huff on it a little bit before we stamp it, just to sort of re-moisturize the ink. You can't really get too much, but that's pretty good coverage we've got there, kind of hard to see. There you go. And then we got Mossy Meadow. And then we're gonna stamp that on to the flower, or the leaves, excuse me. And I do want to make sure I'm going right up to where the flower starts because otherwise we're going to have a bit of a problem with the scan and cut. This is just going to give us a really soft stamped image. Let's get my ink pads out of here. And it's okay if the ink kind of dries a little bit. We're going to huff on it just with our breath. And then look how beautiful that texture is. Isn't that great? Love it. All right. Totally different than, for example, this one, which was with the stamp and write markers. Okay. Makes a big difference there. All right. We're going to attempt to do the scan and cut again so I can show you that you can also do stamped images. This may be a big fat bust again, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Still not gonna find that chiseler. <laughs> so you can also put just tiny little pieces on here as well, especially if you've got 
designer series paper scraps. It's fine. I just try to kind of space out where on the mat I put things. So hang tight. <laughs> I'm stuck in a drawer here. You should see how many extension cords I have. This is going to end up being the same thing here. Let's go ahead and load the mat here. Let's wake it up. Are you awake? There we go. I feel like that's good. Let's load it out one more time. I'm like too close between the... I normally have a whole desktop that I do this on. Let's do that. All right. Oh, the mat. Oh, you know what I did? This is a this is a learning experience here. I didn't feed it in um, with the arrow first, y'all. Oh gosh. See, I tell ya, we all make mistakes, don't we? All right, here we go. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and get that guy. Thank you, Denise. All right, scan, direct cut to the machine, start. Get him. Scan. Thank you. Yeah, so Terry, what happens is when you have a very fresh mat, um, the the basic white does stick to it quite a bit. So I'm zooming in real small. That's gonna give the machine way less data to recognize. Click okay. Of course, the flower is gonna be upside down, but hey, that's all right. I wanna make sure that's just one. Okay, I just did that to make sure. Let's do the little 0.4 distance. Okay. Hopefully you guys saw that again. We're doing the same steps as before. Just made sure that that scanned it all as one image. Please select, we're gonna say cut. And normally what I would do is I would literally stamp an entire sheet of either eight and a half by 11 or 12 by 12 of these flowers. And then you've got a bunch of flowers ready to go for your little treat holder. So I wanna make sure that it's gonna test the mat again. Sorry, I'm out of view. <laughs> oh. Margaret's comment. <laughs> and it's testing the paper. It knows where the paper is. And now it's gonna go ahead and cut that rose out. It'll take less than a minute. We're done. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Home, OK. Unload the mat. Okay. Now we can put this bad boy away. And then I'll show you. We'll go ahead and peel the backing off. Like so. Grab the little spatula. And then you've got a beautiful, distinctive rose, two-tone rose. Love the way that looks. And again, I would do, I would maximize my time through the scan and cut and stamp a whole sheet of eight and a half by 11 and cut them all out, okay? So, bringing in my treat holder here. And there's one thing I forgot to do. We're gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment. We're gonna do that on the right side here. So with the treat holder sort of on its backside or it's inside facing out. The center section here is where I'm going to stamp just for you. And that comes from charming sentiments. Just a cute way to add a sentiment to the treat holder. And that the recipient will see that once we put this together. Show you one more time how this goes. Hopefully you can see that from the side, like that. This one's just gonna fit right over it and then tuck 
right in. It shouldn't fight you too much. Once you get it in line on the side there, it just holds itself in place. How cool is that? All right, so I'm gonna take our little beautiful rose here and some liquid glue. Just put a little bit right there in the center. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop that here. Now you may need to, excuse me, I added my rose after I tied the ribbon, so we may need to finagle the ribbon a little bit here. And then we've got the crinkled seam binding ribbon to finish this off. Let's go this way. I'm gonna kind of loop this around. I'm gonna do it a little bit out of the way and then we can slide it in place. Grabbing my reverse tweezers here for my third hand. And then we'll tie a little bow and then we'll zhuzh it. Okay, reverse tweezers, hold the knot for me, please. And then loop-de-loo. I love working with the crinkled seam binding because it makes it really easy to make bows because it's so thin, just beautiful to work with. All right, let's trim off the ends there. And then I'm just gonna kind of slide this up underneath the rose there like so. So cute little treat holder with two Hershey's Nuggets. Who doesn't need two Hershey's Nuggets in their life? Every day, I say. Chocolate every day, right? <laughs> so there we have, with a little bit of human mistakes tonight, we've got our beautiful, wonderful world card with that diagonal designer series paper. And I showed you how to cut that using the scan and cut. Obviously, you can use a pair of scissors and fussy cut as well. That whole page of designer series paper Gorgeous for making card fronts, but so quick and easy. And that vellum just softens it a little bit for the card. And then we've got our cute little self-closing treat holder, no cut, no glue, that holds two Hershey's Nuggets. So coordinating projects tonight. These eventually will make it to my blog. Likely next week I will link to, I think the original video tutorial. It's for a totally different size, but the mechanics of it are the same. Or I may do a new video tutorial for you. Stay tuned, we'll see how the next two weeks go. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into tonight's Q&A, and I will be here until I answer all your questions to the best of my ability, so hang tight. Thank you all so much. All right, gonna go to the next scene here. All right, hello, Bobby, you got a Q in your name, so you get popped up on the Q&A. Let's see, hi, Brad and Jackie, welcome. Yvette, where do you buy the plastic you sent the six by six paper at? Yvette, I sent you an email, but it may have ended up in your spam. I purchased the, um, the bags for my product share paper from clearbags.com. I wanna say they're like five and seven sixteenths by five and seven sixteenths. I think that's right. Um, but I purchased those from Clear Bags. For my six by six storage, however, I use Avery L Extra Large Stamp and Die Pockets. Those are also listed on my favorites page as well. I cut those down to six and a half inches. I'll just show you an example. They're a little bit of a stronger mill. Is it mill? Like thickness, a stronger thickness of plastic. I prefer to use these long term for my six by six storage. The clear bags work great, but they're really thin plastic, so over time they may break down. But I love these Avery L extra large stamp and die pockets. And I cut those down to six and a half to fit the paper. You could do six and three quarters as well. Let's see. Who do you recommend to watch for the scan and cut? Absolutely, the papered chef, for sure. She's got so many tutorials for the scan and cut specifically with Stampin' Up! products, so highly recommend her. I've learned a lot of things from her. There is also, I don't know if it's still active, but there was also a scan and cut Facebook group, not specific to Stampin' Up!, but lots of tips and tricks to make your cutting mats last longer, um, 
tips and tricks to sort of sharpen your blades, all kinds of great things. So, um, but yeah, definitely Papered Chef. Go ahead and check her out. The model I have is the SDX 125E, I believe. I do have it linked on my favorites page, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. So there's a lot of questions versus the one you had, this one, what's the difference? What the, okay, are they coming up no. eventually? Okay. Um, the Scan and Cut, ooh, I want to say this one is $3.99, I believe. It's definitely an investment. That's U.S. dollars, the last I checked, I believe. Um, but I will tell you, I've gotten way more value out of it than the price of the machine itself. <laughs> the Paper Chef, no. I was talking about, that's Kathy, my team member. I was talking about Kim, the Papered Chef. She's the one that has the... YouTube channel with great tutorials, but she does a lot with the scan and cut as well. Um, I saw Bobby's comment. Awesome. Oops, I'm doing my mouse in the wrong way. What's the difference between color and black and white recognition mode? What criteria should you use when deciding that? Lois, I don't have an official answer for that. Um, I typically always scan in color, I think, because most of the things I stamp are color. But I will say that if I get a scan and I don't love sort of what the machine rendered from that scan as far as what it wants to cut and what it doesn't want to cut, I will try the opposite mode, like the black and white mode, and see if that scans it better. I don't know. I've just always by default gone to color. I think Kim might do black and white, but I'm not sure. Um, but it's sort of trial and error, and I'm not sure which one is... I don't get that too into the weeds with the scan and cut if it does what I need it to do. Um, but great question. Let's see. Will it cut around non-selected flowers? It will not. It will only be the flowers that are in red. Um, and you can pick and choose by going to the edit screen and either deleting or sort of cleaning up if there's things that are cutting that you don't want it to cut. On the scan and cut, if you choose zero border, does it cut exactly? Yes, it does. Cuts right up to the scanned image itself with no white border. Let's see. So you don't lose the option to cut those. You don't, well, once you unload the mat, you do lose the option to cut those from that scan, but you can always stick it back to the mat and rerun it to scan again and it'll just it'll do its thing again. It'll just be a, basically a different cut file, if that makes sense. I have the CM350 of the Scan and Cut as the reason why you upgraded your machine. Yes, Margaret, I upgraded mine because I didn't want to have to figure out the um, cut thickness, or I should say the depth of the blade, depending on the different types of paper that I'm cutting. I also didn't particularly enjoy how loud the CM350 was, so I did upgrade um, because I do use it a lot, especially for my customer thank you cards. Um, it's a workhorse in my craft room uh, just to sort of save me some time if we're not, if, we're, if I'm using a stamp set that I don't want to die cut. In fact, the thank you cards from this week, I used the typewriter from Forever Friendship and I just had to scan and cut that and cut them out. But yeah, it, it's... Whisper Quiet, it auto sent is an auto sensing blade, which is price, it, which is worth the additional hundred dollars in price, um, in my opinion. So, let's see. I think we that's a second one, right? The oh, because the restream and the paper pixie came through twice for the you don't lose the option to cut those. There's okay. A lot of questions about the difference. What is the what is a good best way to re-stick the matte surface? Um, you can do the zig pens. Hold on. I have one of those. When you go to re-stick the mat, there's some great video tutorials about that. I have the zig, I have not done this yet. It's the zig two-way glue, and I need to check. This probably isn't on my favorites page but I will add it. Um, you need to make sure you remove the old adhesive. You can kind of do that with Windex and the little chiseler thing that apparently sprouted legs and walked away tonight. Uh, I so wanted to show it to you. It's on my favorites page. You can check it out. It's super cute little pink plastic scraper thingy for removing adhesive, but I also use it to push my cardstock down before I cut it. But you can clean off all the old adhesive. I think with Windex that works or some type of adhesive remover. And then you can do the zig two-way glue 
um, a very even coat and let that stick and it gets re-tacky. I think Kim from The Papered Chef has tutorials for that as well. Can you use a lint roller on the mat to remove those pieces? Barbara, probably not because they're good and stuck down. Um, I don't think the lint, the lint roller, roller adhesive is going to compete with the adhesive on the mat. And I'm not sure who will win. <laughs> the mat may still hold on to it and not give those little paper pieces up. So I recommend using <clears throat> something like the little chiseler to kind of scrape all those pieces off. <laughs> I know what you'll request for Christmas this year. That's funny, Susie. It's a good gift from Santa, I promise. Is your Scan and Cut the latest model? Mine is from when they first came out, so I was thinking about upgrading it. It's very confusing trying to figure out what the latest model is. I don't know what the latest model is. Um, there you can see that the, the price difference, um, 400 was about all I was willing to spend, but it was definitely an upgraded machine. Um, but I think the SDX 125 is one of the most recent models. But you'll have to check. I don't have the best answer for that, Geneva. I'm sorry, but um, I do love the SDX 125. Yeah, definitely. She, Papered Chef can answer all your questions for sure. I did know that. Thank you, Linda, for the shout out. Lisa Curcio does have a download on her website for her Charming Sentiments bundle to help you know which die goes with which stamp set. She's got a printable that you can stick in your stamp set so you know, or stick with your dies so you know which one goes with which. Very helpful. My go-to source for project inspiration and or layouts honestly is a combination of Pinterest and the catalog. So the catalog definitely for inspiration for um, maybe little elements of cards or things. Um, but Pinterest, I love going to Pinterest to look at layouts. I love looking at other brand stamp, like cards made with other brand stamps, gives me some ideas for stamping up stamps. But yeah, I would say Pinterest and um, the catalog are my two most popular places for inspiration. Oh, Lynn, welcome! How do you keep your cut and emboss machine plates so flat and do the plates ever distress your paper from being warped? So we talked about this quite a We had lots of questions about this last week, so I'm glad you're asking it again. Um, you want to make sure that you're constantly swapping which plate is on the bottom versus which plate is on the top. I feel like I'm doing the hand jive right now. Um, so Brian does a lot of my die cutting for the Paper Pixie and... Um, he probably flip-flops those two about every 15 to 20 cuts. Um, just when he starts to see the bottom one warp, he right. moves it to the top. And then the, the bottom one then the bottom one is more flat. So about every 15 to 20 times. I don't typically have a lot of issue with all the cut marks on the plates affecting my die cuts unless it is foil paper. Foil paper typically will pick up. It scratches very easily and you can leave marks on it. So um, the, the best tip for that, which actually came from Connie Stewart, was using copy paper or junk mail sort of as a barrier between what you're cutting and the die. That way the copy paper gets the impression from your cutting mat, not the piece that you're cutting. And that will keep it really nice as well. And who doesn't love to Stick it in your shredder or run it through your die cutting machine, that junk mail. <laughs> okay. Or when the magnetic plates like moving around too much. Oh yeah, but that's discontinued. N no, like on that one. Like when it's moving around too much, it's, it's warped. Right. We don't have that the magnetic plate anymore. Because it's got all the different wow. magnets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, about a month ago... You did a card envelope pouch. Oh, I haven't posted it, Lonnie. I'm, it's so bad. We have had such a crazy, hectic schedule the last three weeks. You're talking about the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, oh, the tree rings. It's that one. With the, that will be posting to my blog next week. I'm committing to that with the template, with a new video tutorial. I just haven't had time to record and edit and get that blog post out. So you're not missing it. I haven't posted it yet. My poor blog has been so neglected with chaos. My family always comes first, so we will get there for sure. Um, I've done some ones in a different size. Yeah, I did one um, that holds um, Mercy chocolate, so kind of a longer one. That's actually the video tutorial I did. So I'll either link to that video tutorial or I'll do a new one for this size. Um, I love the size because it's great for using up your designer series paper for sure. 
Do I have any cash or check holders? I A lot of my gift card holders, Charlotte, work perfectly for cash or checks. So you just kind of fold them down um, like into thirds or something along those lines. I don't have specifically, I have one from a long, long time ago. One of my very first um, uh, live streams was using the envelope punch board and it was like a money holder, which would be great for that. That one's so old from probably five years ago. But most of my gift card holders, absolutely, you can put cash or check in as well. So if you go to thepaperpixie.com, there's a little magnifying glass in the upper right, whether you're on mobile or computer, and um, search for gift card and you'll see a whole bunch of projects. That's probably one of the most popular questions that I get is, will it hold a gift card? What do I do with all of my retired supplies? Save them, sell them, any suggestions of what to do with Stampin' Up! bundles, paper, et cetera, that, may not want, that I may not want anymore? I do not want to just give to Goodwill. Okay, I have lots of opinions on this, Melissa, so hear me out. I do not keep anything that is retired. I do once a year a retired item sale where I sell everything that is retired and not current in a catalog that is able to be sold. We do have some specialty out of publication stamp sets that we have to wait a year and I just put little post-it notes on those. But I will say that Stampin' Up! products hold their value. So rather it going to um, donation per se, you could also consider selling them on eBay. There's Facebook marketplace groups as well. But you'll find that you can, there are folks that are always looking for the quality of Stampin' Up! products. So I would just recommend Facebook or eBay. eBay, you gotta pay some extra fees for that. But there are lots of Facebook groups specifically for selling Stampin' Up! products. What scanner do you have? It's the SDX125E, Maria. Are there some images that don't scan and cut as well? Yes, Janet. So in, um, I don't think I saved it. In that paper, that particular pattern itself, as an example, there are a couple flowers that are white and yellow. The scan and cut doesn't do really well with light images. So I actually missed it when I looked at the scan. It cut into a flower that I didn't want it to, so the flower looks really goofy. Um, I don't think I have those anywhere handy. But um, the other thing that scan and cut does not handle well, but Kim's got some great tricks for it is any stamped images that have broken lines. So a lot of our artistic stamp sets have sort of breaks in the outline of the stamp set. Scan and Cut doesn't like those. It tries to cut into every one of those breaks. So you can do the pencil trick where you just connect those lines with a pencil before you scan. And then after the machine has cut it, you can then erase your pencil marks, but it sort of tricks the machine to say, hey, this is all one connected line, so please cut out the whole image as opposed to trying to cut into all pieces and parts and then what you're trying to cut is unrecognizable. So those would be the two things, really light images and then, or light colors and then any breaks in line. So I usually will look at stamp sets and be like, ooh, I don't think that's gonna work. Sometimes if the line is really close, you can get it to work, but sometimes it takes a couple of scans to get it right. So it usually scans pretty consistently, but there are some scans that will do differently if you rerun it again. So there's always a chance, I always say, what is it, measure twice, cut once. Before you hit the, the start button after cutting, or to cut, make sure it's gonna cut what you want it to cut, because I don't want you to mess up your, your project. So, okay, Mulan, the first time I used my scan and cut, I thought the ink had dried on my paper when I went to scan, but it was still a little wet. Ooh, when you scanned, the ink got on your glass and left ink on your glass, so whenever you scan, ooh. Check Papered Chef, because she might have, I know she's got sort of some maintenance videos, and I wonder if she's got um, a maintenance video to clean the scanner. I don't know if it's as simple, don't quote me on this, I don't know if it's as simple as just using an alcohol wipe to make sure that's clean, but I'm pretty sure Kim at the Papered Chef has some examples. She's gonna be like, where did all these people come from? <laughs> I'm like, go to her, she's the expert. I know it won't hold a gift card, but would it fit on a gift card in an envelope just to add a little something extra. Um, that is a good question, Linda. I probably would not put this in any envelope to mail because it's just gonna get smushed. Um, now, if you put it in a package, like a bubble mailer, I still think it might get smushed. I don't know if I would do that, if I'm being honest. This is really a gift better given either 
shipped in a box or given to somebody in person, okay? Let's see, does the Scan and Cut perform the same functions as the Cricut, but a different brand, or does the Cricut do more with cutting and printing? Ooh, Jackie, great question. I know that you can load SVG files into the Scan and Cut. It's been pff, 12 years since I had a Cricut. That was my very first electronic cutting machine, but I think, um, I don't know if the new Cricut's Scan and Cut, so I'm not sure that I can answer that one. Do you make your creations for Lily and Nolan's classmates and teachers? I don't so much these days because the elementary school is really particular about outside treats. But yes, when they were in daycare, every birthday, every holiday, I was that mom. Because um, I just love making multiples. Um, so yeah, I used to do that when they were much younger, for sure. Janet, I use my Scan and Cut probably every week, to be honest. Um, I love, it's just... I don't know, it's a very cool thing, especially for stamps that don't have coordinating dies. It just it kind of opens it up there. Nolito, fantastic, you're a fussy cutter. I am not a fussy cutter. There's, you see there, it, there's, we're split, right? Crafters are split. Some love it, some don't. I don't know why I don't love it, but yeah. <laughs> when, when are you updating your site to sell your retired items? Uh, Michelle, hopefully in August is the plan. It's usually a huge undertaking. Um, so we will, the plan is August, if not August, definitely by September. Yes, the SDX 125E that is linked on my favorites page. As far as stamping up value on retired product, do you know if there is much market for stamps still on blocks? Carla, great question. I think that those things are still selling. I would definitely go to eBay and just take a look. There is a way to search on eBay just to kind of get an idea of what things are going for. You can search sold products on eBay. It's more of an advanced search. You just have to kind of look for it and then kind of see what the market is for wood block, you know, stamps on wood blocks. And you can kind of get an idea. Basically, probably every stamp set's been sold on eBay. So they've got lots of information for you to look at as far as pricing. Elizabeth, I get my scan and cut from Amazon. I got mine from Amazon. So um, I haven't looked recently, but as far as I know, it's in stock. So great questions tonight. We're at about 9.15. Thank you guys so much. Let me see if I missed anybody that might be new. I know we said hi to a few. Let's see. New England, New England, New Jersey, not new. Love it. All right, awesome. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for all for sticking in with all the bumps in the road with my scan and cut working in a I don't know, this tiny little space. I was like, oh, if I had done this better, I would have done a, a totally separate camera for you. But just to kind of show you, you know, rough and dirty how I use the Scan and Cut. Love it for cutting out designer series paper, as well as stamped images that don't have coordinating die cuts. One of my favorite tools in my wheelhouse, love it. So thanks for joining me. If you got any tips or tricks tonight that you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. I will be live again for episode 250 next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you'll join me again then. Keep an eye on the blog. We'll get blog. We'll get projects posted to the blog as soon as we can. Um, we're gonna hunker down for a little bit with Nolan having COVID. He's doing really well. No fevers, nothing. We're just hunkered down for that. What is it? 10 day. 10 day quarantine type thing. So thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed week and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.